have been living the life of a contemplative hobo. I have returned to talking with famous people utterly unshaven. Unshaven and unashamed. Good to go. How are you doing, Ken? I'm, uh, I no longer have a physical body. I'm just a disembodied voice, so there's that. Did you watch that latest upload? Did you take things too far? Who's upload? The latest upload where Courtney was talking about becoming one with the universe. You don't become one with the universe. You're already it. We can't get away from the shit. <laughs> Oh, Ken speaks the truth. Yeah, you can't disagree with that one. People are like, at least when you die, you can get away with it, or you can get away from it. It's like, nope, uh, all your all your energy is still floating around. You just don't get to make decisions anymore. So that's sad too. Yeah, yeah my TI keeps trying to think it can like separate itself. Although, and and be a separate observer, but if by chance. Uh, there is some sort of dimension that correlates with consciousness, and I stress if, uh, then perhaps it'll, I mean, it basically sounds like type 5 heaven, anyway. You just gotta leave the body behind and... Early type yeah, 5 somehow. that is type 5 heaven. I mean, in some ways, it kind of sounds like type 9 heaven, in a way, but... Well, it also... It's all, Actually, it's kind of the opposite of type 9 heaven. Type 9 heaven's like... I don't know. I don't know. Nah, I don't want to draw that distinction because I think there's other factors contributing to it. But um, I don't think it's necessarily a dichotomy between type nine and type five. But uh, five and nine have their similarities. Yeah. They're they're, they're both a little. The, their their jimmies got rustled at the whole having to exist thing. Yeah. Existential crises abound. Yeah. I kind of feel like uh, it's a big factor for four, five, and nine. The withdrawn types. Go yeah. figure. Go figure. The ones withdrawing into themselves are the ones that don't want to fucking participate because this is stupid. <laughs> I don't like the way you guys are playing this game, so I'm just going to play by my own rules. And people are like, but that's not how you play. And you're like, what? I'm sorry, I can't hear you from inside of my crystal tower. <sighs> crystal castles, motherfucker. <laughs> Why would you live anywhere else? I just wish my imagination had more power. Elsie, why live on a farm when you can live in a crystal castle in the sky with lasers? Why well, live in a crystal castle when you can live in a crystal farm with crystal sheep? Oh, that would be amazing! Crystal lambs. They're, not only would their hooves be sharp, but they'd be able to cut through anything. Isn't that diamonds? Even though? my depression? That is, that is diamonds. But diamonds are one, one crystalline formation. What kind of crystal are we talking about here? I don't know. I don't know does anything about crystals. Does opal count? Topaz? I mean, we could have a topaz crystal castle if we took, like, all the world's topaz. Perhaps. <laughs> Maybe a quartz. It would probably have to be a quartz castle, if we're being realistic. <laughs> no, no. You're doing it all wrong. Why are you trying to be realistic? I mean... You know, I mean, the material costs are just... It, yeah, if we're being realistic, then, then there's, like, zoning laws and all this other shit. And by the time we get into all that, then it, no, it's no longer fun to have a crystal castle. God, why are we on Earth again? Yeah, this with is... All these, with all these rules. So, one thing I think is kind of cool is... Uh, I was watching this video of a uh, composite image that uh, some people had made of sort of the best guess mapping of what the universe looks like, of what we've discovered so far. You know, I say we as if I've done any of this shit. Um, but uh, it, it was, it was kind of cool. It's like, you, you ever seen videos of like, 
like little like metallic powder and then people put magnets near it and it sort of moves and shifts mm-hmm. with the weird wobbly stuff or yeah it forms like sound. lines of flux and whatever yeah it's yeah. like that mapping they had was that yeah. just with galaxies and i was like that's pretty dope right are you gonna show us oh right yeah i gotta do that whole thing i bring something up to talk about the visual aspects but i totally don't like it i'm such an asshole hold on no, I already have the visual, man. I already got the visual. I already got it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, already got it. I can, I can NI with the best of them. Yeah, it's more like, I would imagine that's, that's S in a way. Get out off that, uh, that Facebook. No, dude. But if you're trying to, if you're visualizing something in your head, it has nothing to do with anything you're actually seeing, man. Sometimes it may have to do with what you saw. Right. Yeah, that is sort of a weird thought. I, I did I have wonder, to look back to a clip I saw of a guy doing that thing with the mag, you know, the the powder. But like, that's why he said it. I, w- I wonder what an intuitive visualization would look like if you never had any sensory experience. Didn't Carl Jung write something about that, like the human archetypes and what and what you would end up generating in your mind if you had like no outside mm, stimuli? Yeah, whatsoever. Like the fetus would just eventually make. Uh, images. Yeah, the images would be aspects of the archetypes, not the archetypes themselves. It'd be like. Oh, I must have misread then. Like I no, I I think like the images. I mean, I I don't know specifically what you're talking about, but as far as I'm aware, the actual images, like you know, the trickster or the hero or different, you know, human images like that are like our sort of composite versions of the actual archetype. The archetype isn't necessarily visual i don't think like the trickster would visual be... in the book oh well somebody dig up carl young he's got some splaining to do yeah seriously what he just he like thinking? leaves us with all this shit and then he has the audacity uh, he has the audacity to die like what a dick Hey Spacels, you think you're uh, you think you're in the four five nine tri type? Me? No, the the other Spacey. Oh boy. I'll just wait then. Oh god damn it! You beat me at my own game. <laughs> Was it very hard? I don't think yeah. these things through. I just wing it. I've been pretty. Uh... Solid, solid five four nine. Okay. Uh, me, you know, maybe maybe five nine four because. I tell you. Sometimes when I look at Neptune, I'll be like, "Man, I'm not that four. Mm. <laughs> I'm yeah. just not. I'm thinking I could be uh, nine six four. Oh, there it is. I found this video here. Okay, wait, did they just open up? Yeah, it just opened up a whole new thing. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, people are typing. Carl Young's his name. Yeah, I think five, nine, four combination is about as de- yeah, it's, it's as detached as you get from reality. You seem awfully here. Me? Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like the most detached you could get from reality is like you know not having been born or like being dead. Well, you know, in 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 spirit. Yeah. We're, we're detached, you know. Actually, here's my thinking: if you were dead, 
I think that's the closest you'd be because they're, they're ah shit. Then there's the question of who's you. Never mind. This is a whole can of worms. Well, I am me, but Spacey. That's an opinion. Spacey is Spacey, and Steve is Steve is also a concept. Steve has only ever been Roger. You shut your whore mouth. Right. If I were to say I am Steve, well, that would that would just be my opinion. I know I am me, but I I don't know what me is. That's probably your most deeply rooted logical fallacy. But yeah. Also, keep in mind when I say these things, I don't have a well developed argument behind them. I'm just throwing stuff out there to be. Uh, I don't know. Well, no, what are the that kids? is. That's, what are the that's kids? The whole, that's the whole ego fallacy. The I is the ego, but the ego is not the self. Yeah, I, uh, I'd actually be more gung ho about that if I haven't, if I hadn't spent like years listening to people talk about, you got to get rid of your ego, man. Just, like, be the self. Be, like, just know that well, you're, like, everything. You can get rid of your ego if you want to, but then you'll just have to replace it with another one. I don't want it. I don't want to get rid of it. It right. has some halfway decent ideas. I just want to get better at meeting those <laughs> needs. Well, I mean, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do. Fung. The point is, <laughs> you should keep that one. <laughs> I've been trying. Listen, I've been trying to make myself crazy for years, Ken. The problem is, I keep rationalizing things. I can't stop rationalizing things. I can't stop either. That's the problem here. <sighs> What's so bad about rationalizing things? Because when you're, if you're rationalizing, you're you're making sense of shit. Isn't that a good thing? No, I would like to finally stop making sense of things. The more time you're the spending... The more time I making... spend yeah, yeah, trying to make sense of things, the less time I'm spending doing anything that's actually useful. Oh, so you don't just do it like on the fly or anything? I mean, I do it on the fly sometimes. If, I mean, if I'm doing something that doesn't take any conscious thought which is anything that I've automated into a, a subroutine. Maybe this is why I'm not sleeping. Maybe I have too much to think about. Why don't you write a book, Spacey? About what? Spacey's Guide to the Universe. Oh, Spacey's Guide to the Universe? Is that K? It'll be... It'll be like 200... No, no. 680 pages, all blank. Except for the last page that says, fuck you. Period. Such a mean book. Um, I guarantee you that last sentence will be the most helpful. Yeah. No. Spacey's Guide to the Galaxy. For sure. Or you can choose a topic like Richard Dawkins, the INTP. What do? What does anyone care about Richard Dawkins? I love how he's managed to make himself like a Twitter anti-celebrity. He uh, because he's the father of memes. That's why. It's fucking Richard Dawkins. I can't. He fucking came up with the term meme, but the internet managed to fucking ruin it by the year. <laughs> and then Christopher Hitchens had to go and die. And now his brother Peter Hitchens has taken the reins. Taking the reins? That's kind of like saying that mustard's going to take over ketchup. It's not quite the same thing. Well. It's not like it's a different he kind of he, Yeah, he definitely hasn't taken the reins of atheism, but he's uh, put himself more in the public limelight. Is he attempting to make hitch slaps? Uh, he is a very conservative man. Very conservative.